I am so glad everybody is with us today. Thank you for being here. We can't wait to talk Miramar with our Miramar expert, George Snyder. Jordan, thanks for taking your time out today. Appreciate you being with us. Hey, no problem, Steve. Glad to be here. So today we are talking Miramar. So let's let's get into first, I guess, what the Miramar is, what sets it apart from other Class A motorhomes in the market, and where it falls in the Thor Motor Coach tier of Class A gas motorhomes. Yeah, uh, great question. It's a question I get a lot, uh, especially um, out in the field working at a show. Um, you know, more of your entry level or, or your uh, first step into gas Class A would be um, uh, would be the Ace. You know, then followed by that Windsport Hurricane uh, product, and then you step into to Miramar, and then of course the Challenger would be uh, more that that top end of our uh, gas Class A. So the Miramar is really the first step into what I'd probably call as a luxury gas class A product. Uh, you're on the bigger chassis or the chassis that has the 22 and a half inch wheels. So allows for a little bit better ride, obviously uh, more storage capacity, uh, but among other things as well that I'm sure we'll get into here in a little bit. Yeah, we have a lot of ground to cover. And uh, for everybody watching out there, there is a number of ways you can ask a question. The most preferred is if you go down and hit the ask a question tab. When you do that, just type in your question there and we'll get to those a little bit later. But Jordan has a lot of information he wants to cover today. And we're going to get into some of the great changes coming for 2021. So Jordan, I'll let you go through some of the key specs here on the Miramar. So go ahead and take it away. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. I know obviously earlier uh, in the week, you guys um, did a video on the ACE, or I think that maybe it was last week. So um, again, going back to what I initially talked about is what are they getting when they go from, you know, the ACE uh, hurricane wind sport uh, to Miramar and really uh, some, some things I like to talk about are, are real numbers and some key specs I just put down for you guys is uh, you're, you're getting double the capacity of the freshwater tank. So for those people that want to full time it, um, you know, that's that's something that I uh, I frequently get asked a lot is how much fresh water they have. So uh, 100 gallons, plenty of fresh water. Um, and then LP, probably not a question I get too much of, but it is something to, to talk about. Um, we rate it in terms of pounds, but I think the, the dividing number is 4.2 as far as gallons. So um, 105 pounds or 25 gallons. And as you can see on the screen, it's, uh, you know, 17 pounds or five gallons more than that Ace Windsport or, uh, or Hurricane uh, product. And then last but not least, and probably the biggest thing I talked about uh, when I'm at a show or if I'm working with a customer at, on a dealership's lot is the exterior storage, uh, significantly more than what you'd see on some of our other gas class A uh, at a lower price point. So uh, the range on the floor, um, on our shortest floor plan, which would be the 32.2, uh, all the way up to 216 cubic feet on the uh, 37.1, which is the bunkhouse model on the Miramar. So I have rough math here, approximately 40% more than what you'd see on uh, on the Ace Windsport or, or the Hurricane product. And the one thing I really like about the Miramar exterior storage layout is how your storage bays are on the campsite. I mean, you can just load those things up and go. And in fact, here's a shot we got passed through. And in this one here, we have a giant cooler. We have a set of golf clubs. Uh, we have some snowboarding equipment. You can still see all the room there. So the design, and we'll get into the design and uh, what Moride does for us to help with that a little bit later, but it is really storage maximized on this i think you'd agree with that yeah great picture great point uh something that you have to talk about when you're going over the, the miramar when you're giving a walk around uh you have to open these these storage bays up um you know i use the phrase a lot um you know champagne taste with a beer budget you know you're going to get a lot of features on here that you would typically see uh and some other manufacturers or won't see until you go into that diesel pusher segment so having these um you know, uh, double-sided aluminum, you know, insulated uh, side hinge slam latch baggage doors. So easy to, to maneuver, easy to open uh, with the gas strut, uh, but more importantly, the the space, right? So getting uh, almost 13 inches of clearance. So putting, like you said, golf clubs, um, tables, chairs, um, and having that full pass-through is, is really key. And then some functionality to it in terms of um, if you were to get some sort of 
you know, rain or water that comes down over that lip. Um, if you notice the, the storage uh, bays themselves are actually, they have a little bit of a curve to it. Um, so with that automotive bulb seal, um, it, it's going to provide a lot of protection, but having that curve actually allows for some of that, um, any moisture or rain water to actually, you know, go down the sides rather than into, uh, into the, you know, the storage bay itself, thus uh, preventing any opportunity to, you know, corrode or, or get any water on some, some valuables. And you're going to get a massive amount of storage inside and out on all of our floor plans. So why don't you walk us through each of these floor plans in the special features and segments of each, because each one kind of has their own unique layout and offers something sure. special. Yeah, um, really simple. On the 32.2, we actually, um, you know, had some requests from what I understand on you know these other floor plans we build in the wind sport and the hurricane specifically and, and are probably are still our best sellers the 29m and um, we didn't do it on the miramore platform so uh, we decided to do that and then some so what you can see is you have a full wall slide on um, on the non-camping side and you have a post seating again this is a key feature you saw on the 29m on the wind sport and the hurricane uh, but it lacked a couple things. So uh, being able to full time uh, more comfortably in that wind sport and hurricane 29M, um, people wanted washer dryer prep, uh, people wanted a bigger refrigerator. So it has those those two uh, those two things in that in the Miramar. And more importantly, you have a king bed on a slide. So if you were to walk into the bedroom of the 32.2, having the king bed on a slide opposing the full wall slide really opens that. That bedroom area up uh, tremendously so you have a lot more space um, and still being under uh, 35 feet and you can still get back to the bed uh it doesn't does do, doesn't fold up so you can still access the bed if you're on the drive correct 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 absolutely um and then moving over to the 35.2 on the top right of the screen this is your bread and butter um we did so well with this floor plan i i to be honest with you, i'm not even sure how long we've been building it probably even before i've been with a company which is, is four years now um we do build this floor plan in the uh, in the wind sport and the hurricane it's called a um a 34R, but what makes this great is the living area. This is uh, this is for those couples uh, or families that love to entertain. So you have uh, the best of, of all worlds, um, and not even both worlds, because you have theater seats, you have a sofa, you have the dinette, um, opposing slides. So you know some people like to reference it as a ballroom of a living area. Um, so you have a tremendous amount of space, nine seat belts. Uh, of course, the drop down overhead bunk is standard on every single floor plan, um, you know, big midship bath. And of course, back in the bedroom, you can see um, it's kind of maybe hard to read on here on the slide, but you have a tilt of view feature for some of those people that have maybe a posturepedic at home. It's a great uh, feature. It's, it's similar. It's not going to be exact, obviously, uh, but it does give them a little more comfort for something they had um, maybe at their home. All right. And moving uh, down to the 35.4, uh, this yep. is the newest model. And it's really got a, a couple of unique seating features here. So kind of take us through this bath and a half floor plan. Yeah. As you see, it, it looks eerily similar to what you see uh, on the 35.2. And since that did, uh, it still does extremely well for us. Uh, the one question we get over and over again is, man, I, I really wish it had a half bath. I wish it had another bathroom. Um, because you are getting nine seat belts in the 35.2, you're able to obviously take more passengers. So thus probably uh, the need for another bathroom. So that's what we uh, that we figured over here. So this is our new bath and half model. Um, again, having three slides is great, opens up the coach really well. Um, you have the option for either one theater seat or having three theater seats. Um, so that's a great option uh, to have, but of course, opposing seating is something that's been really hot for a while so having that that conversation area really opens up the living space uh, of course it does also have the tilted view bed uh, back in the bedroom uh, washer dryer prep i mean this is a full timer's dream in my opinion uh, and, and then lastly a, yeah i was gonna say you also have a fireplace in this one now is this the this isn't the only one with the fireplace or is it it is it is not no it is not the only one with the fireplace so going to the 37.1 this is this is your bunkhouse model so um, again 
a uh, great floor plan for us. It's been around for uh, as long as I can remember. Um, you know, it's your longest floor plan too. So, um, you know, you're on the 24,000 pound uh, gross vehicle weight chassis. Every other floor plan is going to be on the 22,000 pound chassis. Uh, but uh, for a while, this was your only uh, gas class A that was a, a double bath, uh, full double bath, I should say. Um, everything else for a while had just a bath and half. So, um, toilet, shower in, in both bathrooms, um, as well as obviously your, your bunks that you know, can be modified. So if you don't have a need uh, for, you know, if the kids get older, you don't have a need for the bunks anymore. Uh, well, you can convert that into more of a wardrobe area or storage closet. You know, and while we're showing the floor plans here, maybe Tom can show some of the uh, interior photos that we have of these. Let's talk about some of the features that we're going to find inside from uh, the the countertops to the wood. We have new woods in here. So kind of walk us mm -hmm. through what we're seeing and what you get when you purchase a Miramar. Yeah, uh, great point. You know, and again, kind of on staying on that same uh, segment of what are you getting when you move up uh, besides just the bigger chassis and full body paint. Uh, well, when you step inside, you'll know there's a huge difference in, in design and in interior decor, uh, furniture. Um, so what you see here is a great picture of, you know, our new regatta wood. So uh, it's a, a wood similar to what they're doing on the diesel side and the diesel pusher segments. Um, but uh, you also have that, um, you know, I should say uh, solid surface countertop. I keep wanting to say Corian. It's it's like that. I get asked that question a lot. So the solid surface countertop and the galley, uh, recessed double bowl, stainless steel sink, uh, really more of a residential feel, um, to be honest with you. And I think Tom may have a, of the multiplex, which is, yes. is something we also do in, um, in the wind sport and the hurricane model. But um, the multiplex is a great feature that we've implemented about a year and a half ago. And um, it's just the command center for your coach. So being able at a touch of a button to bring out your slides, um, you know, set your thermostat, um, your auto gen start feature, um, dimming your lights. I mean, there's some really cool wow features in that multiplex panel, but more importantly, um, the, the wow factor is being able to have that uh, uh, pair up with your phone or mobile device. I think even iPad, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, you know, especially if you're at a campsite that you're getting ready to bring out your slide and you may not uh, may not be able to see, um, especially uh, in this picture is a great uh, depiction of that. Uh, you know, you can either use the tap or, you know, use the panel right there or being on, on your mobile device. Go, go outside uh, around to the, the non-camping side and make sure you're not going to hit, you know, a tree or a branch or something like that. So um, it's, a, it's a really great feature that's worked really well. It's got a great response. Um, and again, yeah, it's something that's standard. Yeah, I mean, lowering the bunks with that, which is really neat. Um, I know in some of our models, you can uh, raise and lower the, the the TVs. The auto gen start is such a neat feature on that. And we have a complete walkthrough on our YouTube channel. If you do have that and have questions, we walk you through every single button and every single step and every single, uh, I guess, parameter when it comes to the auto gen start. So you were talking about chassis and uh, the chassis they were built on. And this is one of the big changes this year that Ford has done on the F-53, which we use on the Miramar, is dropping that uh, Triton V-10 going down to the V-8. So walk us through this new F-53 and some of the features, because I think this is really going to, I mean, I think it's going to help the drive. I think it's going to help uh, the gas mileage. I think this is a, a great change by Ford. Yeah, yeah. And I'll, and I'll share with you uh, what, what little I know so far mm -hmm. um, since we've been kind of on a lockdown here, have been able to get to the plant and actually see a chassis with my own eyes. But um, yeah, so moving away from the V10, um, you know, going to this V8, it, it's, you know, bigger leadered engine, as you can see, from a 6.8 to a 7.3. Uh, but, you know, Ford and those engineers really, uh, they, they know what they're doing, obviously. And I from what I understand, they were testing this chassis for a couple of years. So um, as you can see it laid out, a significant increase in horsepower, slightly more on the torque. Um, it is a six speed. I know that's a question we've gotten a lot or we've gotten a lot here uh, lately is, is it the 10 speed? Because I know they, they do build a chassis. Um, I think that's probably more for that commercial box truck, if, if I'm not mistaken, that might have the V10. 
uh, or sorry, the 10 speed transmission, mm -hmm. but it is a six speed um, transmission. And then anything over 19,000 pound and gross vehicle weight will have a little bit of a suspension uh, and drivability uh, upgrade. So, um, you know, thicker sway bar, uh, suspension upgrade, um, headlight activation, uh, hill start assist. So if you're on a hill, um, you're not gonna have to worry about rolling back. So there's some really cool upgrades and some features there that uh, we're excited about. Yeah, and I think one thing too, to kind of get to the point, because we have a lot of questions people will ask about, can I get it with this? Can I get it with this? And, and this is a good reminder. This is the way we get it from Ford. This is the way Ford makes it, not us. Ford makes it this way. Sure. Yep, absolutely. I, I think there are a couple other um, safety packages mm -hmm. that Ford offers that really put a hefty price tag on on the chassis. And then when you're buying, you know, several uh, thousand chassis a year, um, I'm, I'm sure us as a manufacturer had to look at, you know, what's what's going to be uh, the best value for us. Um, and and we, we got to be price conscious as well. So, um, yeah, to, to, to answer your question, we felt like, um, you know, with what they're providing, um, standard is going to be sufficient enough for us. Like I said, the, the hill start assist, uh, you know, headlight activation, um, you know, the increase in suspension um, or suspension upgrade, I should say, for, for the chassis that's over 19,000 pounds in, in gross vehicle weight. Um, it's going to make a huge difference in, in drivability and handling, uh, especially on the Miramar, being on that bigger, you know, chassis with the 22 and a half inch wheels. And here's something I'm so glad Ford finally did on that chassis was update the interior. Now we do have, we haven't, uh, and I'll set this up. We haven't been in to see the new F53 on the uh, Challenger and the Miramar. We did get it on the Ace. So the photos you're seeing are from the Ace, but the layout is very similar. I'm so glad for Jordan finally updated the steering wheel to what we're seeing here. Yeah, um, it's, it's going to resemble something you you see if you're getting into you know uh, you know a half ton. Uh, you know, the 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 I guess you call it the steering wheel control or uh, or steering column control. I mean, you have uh, the ability to kind of navigate through that digital screen on the dash up front um, with some of the uh, oh, what are the features I'm thinking of here? Yeah, I mean, you you can see the great picture yeah. of it. Fuel economy, see how you're doing in terms of um, you know should I be a little bit heavier on on the on the throttle or or layoff and and that's another question I get is is fuel economy. Yeah, uh, I always want to. I always want to remind people it's, it's not your daily driver, uh, but also something you probably don't have a picture of, but what we are adding to the Miramar as well as some of the other gas class A's are uh, the upgrade in that um, that dash radio. So that 10 inch oh. dash radio is going to have um, Apple CarPlay. It's going to have, um, I know some people who use Samsung or Android, it's going to have the Android, I think it's Android Auto is what it's called, mm -hmm. um, you know, Bluetooth capability. So really we wanted the, the transition from maybe going in your your daily driver of pickup truck um, or, or van to be if, especially if you're a Ford person to be very uh, seamless in terms of a transition from going to your daily driver into your motorhome uh, having the similar control center on that steering column uh, as well as your dash radio uh, we didn't want them to have to learn a new process or learn uh, new applications yeah, I think it's going to be a great upgrade. I think it's going to make the the drive very exciting, to say the least. Mm -hmm. uh, as we get uh, through more of some of the great features you'll find in the Miramar, every single one comes standard with the gas generator. So talk about what you get in the generator in the Miramar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no change here. Uh, it's tried and true as the Cummins own in. Um, uh, 5,500 watt generators means for all your coaches that are provided with uh, 50 amp services, the generator they're going to get. Um, the only difference you'll see is on, on the Ace, Windsport, and the Hurricane. Uh, we do make a couple floor plans uh, with a 30 amp service. So at that point, it'll be a 4,000 watt. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is the tried and true. It's the most serviceable generator in the industry. Um, and um, they're typically, I mean, I'm not sure if you're going to get this question. It's, it's always going to be on the uh, the non-camping side at the rear, so it shouldn't ruin your, um, you know, your picnic or your your lunches out in front underneath the awning. All right, and as we move on, we get to talk about some more of the great features. 
solar something uh that is a great addition especially when you're dry camping you know you got uh you got the solar this year so talk about uh the addition of this yeah this is this is something exciting for us uh we added the um the solar charge controller uh last year so given the, those you know dealers the ability to quickly upgrade a uh, customer by just putting on a panel and some brackets uh, but the change for 21 is is even more exciting. We're actually going to put the panel on. So um, they'll be equipped with the solar charge controller as well as a 100 watt solar panel. Um, if they do want to add additional panels, uh, they do have the ability. And, and with the Miramar, you have the room to do that. Yeah, plug and play. Um, we got yeah. the strapping up there real easy to do here. So there's your uh, rapid camp we were talking about. The uh, The app is so easy to use. I do, I do love the addition of the system, and we've made some upgrades to this over the years. As we've, and this is this is just a great system for those of you who have never worked it. And I know we talked in depth on this just a few minutes ago. So that's what it looks like from the screen in the app, and uh, we'll move on. Something else that, uh, if you can explain a little bit uh, the importance of having what we put in the Miramar is this eighteen hundred watt pure sine inverter. Yeah. Uh for me, it's really simple. It's the residential refrigerator um, and, and auto gen start features. When you when you have two of those things, uh, having an inverter is is not only crucial but it's needed. So um, you know it's it's going to give you power to those outlets. Um, you know from 12 volt to 110. Um, for I believe it's in the bedroom on the right hand side for some of those folks that may need a, a CPAP machine. Obviously, your refrigerator is going to be able to run. Uh, without the need to turn on your generator while you're driving down the road. Um, and then in the passengers, passengers area, what we call, um, you know, that power workstation with that desk that pulls out, there's actually a, um, you know, a 110 outlet down there. So you have, you know, a couple um, couple features. And then of course, all your media. So, you, you know, your TV. So if the kids want to watch a movie uh, or stream something, uh, they have the ability to do that without the need to burn up all your fuel by running your generator. So uh, pretty self-explanatory, but, you know, the Xantrex is one of the best uh, inverters uh, in, in the market. And it's what we put in every single, uh, every single Miramar and, and I believe also on the Challenger. Yep. Great addition to have. And this is another one you talked about kids going down the road, the TV's running. How can you stream something with the wine guard connect? Yeah. Um, not only that, but uh, you know, a question I get a lot from a coach that is sold is the customer wants to add an in motion satellite. Um, probably not getting that question as often today as I was maybe four years ago. Um, just because of the, the rapid increase in streaming services from Netflix to Hulu to even now ESPN and, and some others. But um, what it does give you is the ability to provide, you know, um, in coach Wi-Fi. So it's actually a three in one system. So you have your HD TV antenna that's underneath that black plastic dome that you're showing on the screen there, uh, but also the Wi-Fi booster. Um, or Wi-Fi extender, as some people call it. So if you're parked, uh, I know a lot of um, uh, most most RV parks today should provide. Uh, maybe not your state and national parks, but maybe your KOAs will provide. Um, you know, some sort of Wi-Fi capability. So boosting that router, it's still providing um, you know a secure network, which I think is really important for some of those people who are possibly working remote or work from home. Um, but the third and most exciting thing is going to be the, you know, 4G LTE, um, what they call a hotspot. So mm -hmm. you have that ability for most people on their phone. Uh, it's kind of the same thing, but you pay as you go, you pick the amount of data you want, but by driving down the road, you can get, you know, uh, Wi-Fi in your coach. Um, and so with that ability to, pair up with whether it's a, a, I think it's a Google Chromecast or Amazon Fire Stick, of course, Apple TV, or or maybe even swap out to a, a, another smart TV. Um, so having that ability to stream uh, and, and not set you back a couple weeks in service, because that's the biggest thing I like to talk about is, you know, those customers that want an in-motion satellite, it may put you back a couple more weeks to go on that trip that you're, you know, you're set to go on uh, because of the dealership you bought it from you know, it's just backed up in service and that's just a common issue. So uh, it's great and it's standard. It's not even an option. So we're putting on every single floor plan in the Miramar. 
Awesome. Yeah, it's a great addition. And uh, back to uh, there's one of the paints. Let's talk about and we don't we ha there's two new colors. Talk about uh, the new paints that we have this year because we can get uh, partial paints and full body paints. Yeah, uh, that's one of the key differences uh, in terms of Miramar to Challenger. And it sounds like we may have a couple of questions on that. And probably the biggest question I get uh, is, you know, what what's the differences? And and you know, start was with the full body paint. So it is standard with the Challenger. It is an option with the Miramar. So as you can see on the left-hand side, that is our take five, if I'm, it's such a new page up. So take five paint job um, on the right is gonna be your cool jazz. Um, the previous year we had what was called a blue note. We do have something very similar. I think it's called blue indigo, um, but you know, not, not too flashy colors. Um, work really well in my opinion uh we're really excited about it and we we, we think they'll do really well <laughs> yeah and as we see in the one picture uh this is even a better picture thank you tom uh let's talk about the power awning we got a legless design led wind sensors and something else you can control from rapid camp so let's walk through the advantages of having an awning like this yeah, absolutely. Um, some cases, some parts of the of the country, you've got uh, really strong winds and something that happened, you know, uh, with a lot of uh, veteran RV years um, uh, is the awning being ripped off or a bolt coming uh, coming off from a strong gust of wind. So um, having the, the armless awning, uh, for one, less sidewall intrusion, so less bolts going into the fiberglass of your sidewall. Um, so it's a cleaner look, um, you know, less opportunity to maybe, um, you know, smack your head on one of the cross arms. That, that's probably more so a problem on the class C side rather than the class A, but it is an example I give that that could happen. Um, but from, you know, safety functionality of it, if you do have that strong gust of wind, uh, if the nose of that awning moves up or down, I, I think the range we were given was approximately eight inches. Um, you know, it will automatically pull that awning in. Um, so that's that's a, a great safety feature, uh, especially if maybe you went for a hike, you left the awning out, you start to get a, a real windy day. Um, you don't want to come back to see, you know, a nasty accident. But um, to your point, a great feature that is also controlled by, you know, your, your smartphone uh, or tablet, of course, inside the coach as well. And it's another addition that I like that we did on uh, on that was when we added that LED light strip underneath that awning. I think it, it one, it, it throws out a nice light. So if you're at night, you can still get in and out. If you want to use the bathhouses, you're coming back from a walk or using the pool at the campground or wherever you are. And it's not as blinding as those old, just like those big old lights that used to just kind of ugly up the side of the coach there. I think this is just a, a real. Yeah, nice you see on there. the picture, Steve, um, it's a great point where the light strip is at is actually, you know, uh, essentially on the sidewall of the coach. And, and the reason being or why we changed that is we used to have it all the way out. So um, I, I almost want to point to it here. But yeah. if, if in some cases you couldn't bring that awning all the way out to its full extended uh, range, um, you may lose that ability to use the, the LED light strip. You know, maybe covered up um, if you just don't have enough room to bring that awning all the way out. So by bringing it all the way in, uh, putting it um, at the know whether i think you want to call it maybe the base or right again right along the uh the side wall of the coach uh doesn't matter how far you bring it out and bring it in you're always going to have that uh that protection or that light especially at nighttime and if you notice right under the awning i love this feature because it just looks so cool and i i have two golden retrievers myself uh one loves to travel the pet tie down link out there or for bikes or whatever you have yeah, yeah. Uh, I had a golden retriever myself, Steve. So I uh, appreciate that. Um, yeah, I mean, the pet link, um, but not just for your pets. Uh, you can tie down you know, your grill, um, anything you really want to secure down, um, you know, bikes. It's it's a great tether feature. But, you know, something kind of cool we, we implemented here, I think it was last year, was actually tying in that that thor motor coach logo on it so really sets it apart from most um just just more of another wow feature you know from thor but uh pretty functional uh, again I, i'm not sure because i'm sure we were going to get a lot of questions what the weight rating is like how how much you can tug <laughs> on it before it may fail but you know in most cases for you know your pet or bikes or, or grill it's going to be uh it's going to be a great feature to have. It's just one less thing you have to go out and buy at a hardware store. Let's put it that way. Exactly. Exactly. So great features there. Another one is 
we have the TV with the sound bar and, and I'll just throw this out there. I know we get a lot of comments. People say, well, why would I, why would I want a TV? We don't force anybody to watch it. You yeah. don't have to watch the TV, but if you are out and we are those, when we go out, Jordan, we like to take and we'll have a little fire pit sitting outside at our campground and we will, we'll have, we'll have family movie night outside one night when we're out in the campground. So it's nice to have this option. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, I'm a football fan, so so tailgating is is something that's uh, really important to to me and my family. And being uh, only a you know a couple miles uh, away from from Notre Dame, you know, that's something that's you know, really special to us. Is we try to go to every um, you know every home game. So we have some friends that that have a motorhome, and in a lot of cases, you know, they have the the sound bar playing some music, having fun, and partying, and the game is on the TV. So that's a great feature to talk about is you can, it's not necessarily always tethered to the TV. You can pair the sound bar up with, you know, mobile device and play music and have um, something completely separate uh, going on the TV screen. And what's um, what you probably can't see is it's on a swivel bracket. So having, you know, the entertainment cover um, coming up uh, provides that layer or anti-glare protection. Also the awning uh, gives you another layer of protection from glare. Um, but also having the, the ability to pull the TV out and pivot it any way you want. Um, it's just another cool feature that we're, that we're utilizing that not a lot of other manufacturers are. Um, and again, soundbar could be an option. We make it standard. And it's something, just go back to that slide, Tom. I just want to point something else out. We talked about the full body paint, Jordan. If you just how shiny this is, because you can't see it from the picture, look over to the left side of your screen. You can, you can see the reflection of our camera in that paint. That's how shiny that is, folks. I mean, it's really, uh, the, the pictures don't really do it justice when you're out. You have to see it because it just pops. It's super. Yeah. Shiny. But, yeah. The point. sickest paint is great. Yeah. It's, it's what, uh, we, as far as I, I know what we've been using, uh, for as long as I've been with a company and, um, it, it, you know, works really well. Obviously you're not going to have the fading like you would on, uh, just the, the HD max, the fiberglass, um, and uh, of course, again, it is an option. So if people want to maybe save some money. Um, the partial paint option, um, you know, provides a, a more of a you know price uh, price conscious buyer uh, the ability to still get into a luxury gas class A, but uh, save some money as well. Yeah, and uh, another great exterior photo there. Uh, we got another one. Something else we haven't talked about. Um, we have the nice heated remote windows. You can see, uh, I don't think you can see in this picture because of the way the shadows are, but uh, some of the other little features that we add in, just so you have them, the, the heated remote mirrors or your cameras are built in. We have one touch hydraulic leveling jacks. So kind of walk through some of those little bells and whistles that we have that people don't think of. I mean, we have exterior propane connection as well. Yeah, Tom, actually, if you go back to that previous picture, um, I'll point out a couple of things. So up front, uh, just Steve, like you mentioned, um, the the chrome velvac mirrors uh that's that's another great talking point um velvac is a name that carries a lot of credibility and and validity in this industry um a lot of your other higher end luxury uh gas and diesel uh motorhome manufacturers use those those mirrors exclusively so um you know we know that it's got a lot of brand recognition but more importantly its functionality of being able to be uh heated um you have the side vision cameras uh, up there as opposed to below the belt line over the wheel well, which is, you know, a lot of other man manufacturers do. There's nothing against it. We just feel like this is a, a, a better option, um, less chance of having, you know, those cameras get coated up by any sort of, you know, of course here in Indiana, you get snowy days, you get, you know, you get salt on the road, uh, a lot of dirt and grime. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's functional more importantly. So, that as well as you move down the coach and something I, I, I could see pretty clearly here is the instant tankless hot water. Um, so no more six gallon hot water tank. You have on demand uh, hot water. That's something you get when you step up into into that Miramar price point. Yeah, and that, folks, is the right the center of your screen with that middle valve. Uh, the propane exterior quick propane connect is a great little feature uh, to yep. use as well. Yep. Again, uh, something standard just, you know, provides you know, the customer, the ability to, to get it right when they purchase it from the dealership. It's again, one less thing they have to worry about going to the hardware store or trying to, trying to rig up themselves. And, and it's just, you know, little things like that can cause, you know, um, a, a delay for customers that may lead them uh, or leave them just, um, 
uh, just frustrated. And so by easing, you know, easing the minds of our customers and putting little things like that, such as, um, you know, not only the propane connection, but your, your pet link, um, we think it's, it's a great, it doesn't take a lot of time. It's a great feature to provide. Well, and one of the things too, I think in the Miramar to point out is so many features are just standard. There are not a lot of options to choose from. And I think that is a, a huge thing to consider when you're looking at possibly upgrading or even purchasing. It's like, okay, this is just, this is just standard. This is just, this is just how Thor Motor Coach does it. Yeah. Um, you know, in terms of a, of a dealership conversation, it's, it's usually revolved around, you know, the resale value and getting maybe even a used Miramar. But um, yeah, I mean, for, for almost all of our gas class A's, there's, there's not an option sheet that lists, you know, thousands upon thousands of dollars of things you could get. So, um, you know, when they drive off the lot, I mean, they're, they're really not losing any value at all. Uh, you know, the Miramar, you know, the full body paint, uh, a couple of other things here and there. We mentioned fireplace. Um, really, that's about it. And of course, you could swap out sofa for, for a theater seat in some cases. But um, we, we really want to make sure that we want to provide as much content as possible without the need for them to uh, worry about spending any additional money uh, or just keeping them from going on a trip. I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. And if you go back uh, one more slide, Tom, to that storage base, something else I want to talk about. And it's something that uh, we've talked about when we've done uh, these videos, because I think it's important to talk about how we upfit our chassis um, because we do it the right way. And let's talk about what Mori does for this and how it, it, it caters to each and every floor plan across the line. Yeah, Moride is, is an engineering and fabrication company that, you know, we've partnered with and they do a number of things for us, but more importantly, it, it's the chassis upfit. So, you know, when I'm giving a plant tour and I'm talking about, um, you know, to, I'm talking to a customer and asking them, hey, if, the, if they are a homeowner, you know, uh, it's kind of a leading question, but what's the most important part of your home? And, you know, nine times out of 10, they're going to say, uh, it's, it's, um, it's the foundation. You know, in some cases it may say, may say it's my man cave, but <laughs> provided by the foundation. Right. So, um, yeah. And it starts there. So, uh, it's a, it's a square, you know, flat, um, uh, balanced foundation, you know, flat level squares are the three words I typically use. So, uh, from, you know, from the front left to the, uh, the back rear, or if it's a 22 foot class C motor home, or a 45 foot tag axle diesel pusher, uh, they guaranteed that the foundation, uh, you know, the floor of that motor home is gonna be uh, flat and level within an eighth of an inch. Um, and, and that's the, the tolerance that they, they allow. Um, and that's the reason why you'll never see any sort of trim or any gimp molding if you walk inside the coach, you know, between, you know, the, the sidewall and the roof. Um, a lot of other manufacturers may, um, may have some gapping and it's it's not necessarily always a bad thing but uh we almost guarantee that our tolerances are are so tight that you'll never need to hide any imperfections and that's what they provide so on the mirror bar you're going to be supported by um what we call risers um you know about 13 inches is what they are so that's what gives you a lot of that pass through uh on uh, the ACE and, and the wind sport and the hurricane. I know Ryan Burkhart uh, talked about it on the ACE, as I'm sure. So about seven inches on, on the ACE wind sport and the hurricane. So 13 inches on uh, on those risers for, for the uh, the Miramar. So again, so it gives you the, the storage capacity or the pass-through uh, ability in those storage compartments. But again, it's all about a flat level surface. So uh, you, you certainly want to have that in your home. More importantly, want to have that in your motor home that's obviously rolling down the road and going through, in some cases, some undulation of, uh, you know, could be country roads, uh, could be going, you know, through the mountains. So uh, that's why we provide that. And that's why we partner with Moride specifically. All right. And as we move on, I know we have, uh, boy, gosh, we went to uh, sleeping options in here. We got, uh, you got the bunks. So what is the, the, the max sleeping capacity in the bunkhouse model? I, I got the floor plan pulled up. So let's see. We got one, two, three, four. Yeah. Oh, um, nine we people? just counted out, you know, um, they want to utilize, you know, the bed and the dinette. Uh, it, it depends, obviously, the size. You're, you're talking adults right. or kids. Um, was What was it? A nine, if I remember one, right? Two, three, four, five. <laughs> yeah, I think it's like nine, nine, uh, nine people because that drop down overhead bunk, which you're seeing here. And that's something else that's that's nice is that comes standard on every single Miramar. 
Correct. Yeah, it's an electric, uh, you know, powered um, drop down overhead bunk. And in more cases than not, you walk inside the coach, you, you really don't notice that it's there. You know, it's built in to the front cab area extremely well. It, um, the word I always mispronounce it is feng shui. Is that right, Steve? Yeah, no, I think uh, that's right. It sounds so, right. Um, so it works really well. It's not clunky or in the way. Um, you know, in, in some cases, customers will say, I don't really need that. Uh, we'll come to find out maybe they carry some some extremely valuable things with them. So I always talk about the ability to use it as a hideaway safe. Uh, but more importantly, it's it's not a twin. You know, it is a, it's a full size, um, just shy of a queen. So you can sleep two adults up there. It's a 500 pound capacity. Uh, again, with the netting back there, it's, it's it's great for the kids. And of course, it's a safe area for the kids too. Uh, the ladder's provided. So uh, it's a fun feature to talk about and, sh- and more importantly show when you're uh, when you're talking to some customers who have some kids. And if you bring it down uh, using, you know, having them pair that, uh, you know, uh, the Firefly system to their phone or mobile device and having them bring down the bunk, it's just, uh, it's another wow factor for them. Yeah, some great, uh, some great features. Again, we're back to the floor plans here and we got a lot of questions come in. So you want to, you, you want to dive in because we got a lot yeah. of people who want to know. And one of the first we'll start with, uh, Kent, uh, and you kind of touched on it just a a little bit, but we'll get into a little more. Uh, what is the difference between a TPO roof and a fiberglass roof? Which does the Miramar have, and what are the maintenance requirements? Yeah, um, it's a it's a TPO roof. So TPO stands for a thermal poly olefin, and it's a commercial grade roofing material. That's the easiest and sim- most simple way I can uh, describe it. Um, you know, every Walmart built after 2011 has TPO. You reference um, all the time. Um, you know, here I'll just reference as reps, um, you know, the Dallas Cowboys Stadium, the um, canopies and, and the terminal of the Denver airport, um, all TPO. Uh, and and that in some of your hotter parts of the country, I already referenced Dallas, but uh, the uh, Arizona Cardinals Stadium in Phoenix, it gets um, uh, extremely hot to say the least. So um, it's impervious or resistant to UV rays. So uh, whereas if you had a rubber roof, you would have to treat that with um, certain protection. Uh, of course, our skin, you know, we, we get affected by being out in the sun too long, right? We, we uh, get sunburned. So we put on sunscreen. Uh, that's not something you have to do with TPO roof. We actually had a discussion about this. Um, I think it was two years ago at May training. And uh, you know, I think it was one of our engineers that came in and spoke and said, uh, soap and water. And that's just if it's dirty. So it's really no maintenance. It does have a 12 year uh, warranty on there for, for parts, uh, not labor, obviously labor is dependent on, on the dealership uh, itself, but a 12 year warranty is still um, nothing to turn your nose up at. That, that's a long time. And it just shows you how, uh, how durable that, uh, that product is. Um, you know, as far as the fiberglass, since we don't use a fiberglass roof, um, I don't know enough about it. Um, but I do know if, if spider or sorry, if a uh, fiberglass cracks, it's more of a spider web cracking. It's probably, uh, in my opinion, my guess, best guess is probably more, uh, more expensive to repair. So if the TPO were to be snagged or cut by s- some rare reason, uh, you literally cut a piece of TPO from a roll, uh, it, almost like you would see, you know, rolling out um, carpet in a new home. Uh, but cut a piece of TPO, put it over where that, that hole or that uh, crack is and use a heat gun and it adheres to itself pretty easily. So can't like anything else. You got to go up there just like the car motorhome has maintenance. So you got to get up there and you do have to check your seals uh, up there as well. Uh, Let's talk about uh, more chassis questions here. What types of brakes are in the front and rear of the coach? Uh, Disc brakes. That's the, the, as much as I know. <laughs> okay. So I'm again, having uh, uh, given you the little, I, I know yeah. about this new chassis since I haven't been in the plant yet to see one, uh, being on this, uh, at home restriction, but yeah, I do know they're all disc brakes. Yeah. And hopefully that'll change here. Now everybody's going back to work in the next few weeks. I'm very excited to get back there. Uh, yeah, stability same. control is, is that offered? And again, I don't know that. Um, that, I think that's a part of one of the, um, one of the additional safety packages that Ford provides. Again, I think there were, and this may be a question for either engineering or our product development team. Um, there was, 
a couple additional packages you could purchase from Ford uh, on the F-53. Uh, I think they were called, again, safety packages, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure. So a quick answer is, does provide that i don't know if we're um if we're doing that at thor for uh, for these these motorhomes for the miramar so um we'll have to get back to him on that but i think um and again um you know for what we are getting with the upgrading suspension and um and obviously all the other features that become standard on that new f53 the v8 it's uh, it's going to be a better ride and better handling all right. And this is something, uh, another question coming in, I think is kind of a neat process if you get to see it when you're on the plant tours. Let's talk about how we install our windshields, uh, kind of automotive style. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, simply put, it's an automotive bonded windshield. So, you know, they sit on a, you know, the windshield itself um, uses an automotive seal, but, but it's on a, we'll call it like a squared jig or, or a mount uh, and they cure overnight. So they go all night rather than just for a couple hours. So you know, just a uh, guarantee. It's just the same way you would see uh, your windshield uh, mounted on, um, you know, on your car or your truck or your van at home. So, uh, but yeah, it is an automotive bonded windshield. All right. And uh, here's another question about uh, the floor plans. As we always are thinking about what we can end for floor plans, will a non slide out floor plan be available? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> I, 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 heart, I would, uh, um, I, w- I wouldn't bet any money that we would. It's just, um, again, when we're talking, you know, full timing and those people that would love to be in a diesel class A motorhome, but and just can't, you know, either fit it into their budget and their finances or justify uh, going to that price segment, really want to provide them an experience um, or a living experience um, in, a, in a gas class A market. So uh, having, having, you know, slide outs is a tremendous advantage in terms of living space and, and just comfort all around. And uh, as we're going through answering these questions here, uh, Chris Cutter, our product development guru on our Miramar is going through and answering a lot of these questions uh, for some of the more technical uh, ones. But some something like this I want to throw out there because I know this is kind of important, especially the way the slides work. So uh, let's talk about what technology we use for the slide outs and what three tracks is and why some have them and some don't. Yeah, this is a really easy question to answer. So we use the the Schwintech system from uh, from Lippert. Uh, the the three track system is something that's actually proprietary to Thor Motor Coach, and we only use it on a full wall or what some people call a super slide. So on that 30, uh, 32.2, uh, the campside slide of the thirty five point two, you'll see the three track system. So it's it's two tracks up top. Uh, one at the bottom, just again, adding uh, more stability when that uh, that slide is being brought out. Um, you know, uh, trying to think what what was, what else was a part of that question, Steve? Uh, I was scrolling through. It was um, three tracks. Uh, why do some slide outs have three track system what other, uh, and while others do not on the same coach? Yeah, well, just the shorter slides uh, don't necessarily have a need for that uh, based on weight capacity. Uh, and I couldn't tell you what that weight is. It's probably more of an engineering question. But just know if it's a full wall slide, it'll have, have that three track system. Um, you know, in years past, I think it's probably prior to my arrival with the company, um, having two, you know, two tracks and one at the top, one at the bottom. Uh, it just it, it would run the risk of being We'll say off kilter a little bit. So having uh, having the two tracks at the top and the one at the bottom just provides a more guidance, more stability. So it's going to when that slide is being brought out uh, with sufficient power, it's going to be brought out evenly. All right. Uh, what size tires are in the Miramar, and can one order them with Ford's optional two twenty five eighty R nineteens highway tires? Uh, twenty two and a half. Um, you know, again, that that's probably the, one of the first things I talked about is going from you know the Ace Windsport and Hurricane. Um, you know, I believe I mean they can order, uh, from best of my knowledge, a uh, tire from uh, wherever they would like. Um, but they are Michelin's, so it's 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 a great quality tire. Um, as opposed to, I'm not sure what others are are putting them on. I think more times than not, they're anything any chassis that's coming from Ford uh, with the 22 and a half inch wheel is going to be uh, it's going to be a Michelin. So uh, good, you know, great, great quality tire. 
All right. Uh, question here. Uh, are front driver and passenger airbags included, such as Ford does in their 550, 350, 450, and uh, cab chassis used in other Thor motor homes? I, not on the passenger. Um, I have to double check since this is a new chassis if, if we're putting airbags. Um, I, I would get I'd almost you know, uh, bet Carter, anything that's in the yep. driver's. Yeah. yeah, Chris. Yeah, the the, the F fifty three does not have uh, airbags on there. Okay. Uh, here, oh, here's a good one. Uh, if you've never been on a plant tour, I suggest uh, when we start doing those again, you get in the area, take one because it's really a great insight on how we do things. And who knows, Jordan may even take you on that tour. But talk yeah. about how the floors, walls, and roof are attached to each other. Oh yeah, I mean, um, simple. I mean, you have uh, the, I believe the the screws we use. I think they are a twelve hundred pound capacity uh, uh, per per bolt. Um, and I used to I used to remember this of how many we put down along the belt line. Uh, but you know, so bolted into the the steel frame underneath, uh, so the steel floor, I should say. But up top is where it's really interesting. Is we actually you know secure the the roof to the sidewalls and then we put the the tpo roof material over those those screw heads or, or those bolt heads so uh, what you won't see up top is a you know 100 plus uh, we'll call it you know uh sealant uh mm -hmm. opportunity so you know we bolt the sidewalls to the roof put the tpo roof material over those screw heads so less opportunity to have any any rainwater or any water leaks or intrusions all right. And as we move on to the questions, I was trying to get Tom back. We lost Tom's signal, but uh, we got a nice interior picture. We're stuck until I am able to add him back. That's all right. <laughs> uh, here's, here's a great question that we get. And uh, I know you get it when you're out at the shows. I know you get it from uh, some of the dealers. So let's talk about the positive steps that have been taken over past concerns of initial and long term quality control, durability, warranty claims, repair times, and uh, some finger pointing between Thor and dealers. Yeah, I'll simply just talk about um, the most important thing is, is, is for us, it starts up top. We hired a new uh, vice president of operations who oversees uh, production and quality control. Uh, Jeff Newport has, d has done a tremendous job and I think he's going on two years now with us um, and really stepping in and, and being hands on and implementing some 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 key changes. And I'll just be quick because I, I could be really long winded with the, the few minutes we have left. but. Um, you know, monitoring uh, the amount of time waste, you know, so uh, lessening the amount of time a, a plant worker goes, uh, leaves the, the production line, you know, essentially maybe grab a tool and come back. Uh, but the, the thing I'm probably more excited about and most proud of is the quality gate checks. Um, so, you know, every, I forget what it is per line and we've got, you know, uh, eight plants. So, um, for example, you know, in, in the Miramar plant, let's talk about that. You know, um, we'll say every, I think it's every quarter of the way down the production line. You'll see, a, if you take a plant tour, you'll see up top, there's blue signs and green, green signs. And those green signs are quality gate checks. Uh, so essentially, um, everything that's been built or produced or, or installed up until that point, um, it doesn't go to the next step in the production process without passing, you know, that checkpoint. Um, and having, you know, an operational excellence room, uh, we're easy to monitor waste. You know, for example, sometimes our suppliers may uh, forget something that goes, you know, to install on uh, the radio, for example. It could be as simple as like, a, you know, a plastic piece or a bezel. Uh, we may take one from a coach that's going to be built after that. So monitoring those things, um, you know, holding our, our vendors and, you um, uh, suppliers uh, accountable and and you know building the coach on the line i think that's the most important thing is it's not going to get all the way down to the end and then we go through the audit process and go through the checks and and think oh man you know now it's going to set us back a long time before we can ship this unit so rather than um you know going through the entire production process and then testing and running through everything uh, it's going to be done much earlier in the process so allowing us to uh, you know, make those necessary changes or, or repairs um, before it even moves forward. So that's 
that's the the shortest answer I can give you. I hope that's. <laughs> hope that's and enough. I invite you to you know, and, and it is. And when we get back on tours, I invite you to come in, everybody to 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 take a tour and and see for yourself because it really is uh, it it is amazing to see how it all comes together and how things have really, as as Jordan said, just kind of a. Uh, been upgraded, if you will. Uh, let's talk about the life cycle question. What is the life cycle for future parts and availability? Uh, it's a good question. That, and I'll kind of defer that one to either uh, Chris Carter or some of the people that that, um, that probably know that answer a little better than I do. Uh, my guess is, oh man, I, as long as the vendors and suppliers are supplying them, um, you know, probably in some cases dependent on the service center to which the dealer is, you're going to uh, to get that repair uh, or service uh, function done. Um, yeah. So short answers, I don't know, but we can find out, yeah, right? <laughs> absolutely. That's probably probably very slimmer. I'm guessing too what you find in uh, in your car there. Um, let me move down to the next question here. Um, are there enhancements for four season usage? Hmm. I'd almost ask for a follow-up question. Enhancements. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, I don't know. We, well, we certainly don't, again, going back to the options, um, thing we talked about earlier, Steve, not a whole lot of options, but we feel, you know, the, the things that are standard on this coach, um, should be sufficient enough for, for all weather. I mean, it is all weather coach. Um, you know, obviously you have the ability to, um, uh, to winterize it, you know, with the, the Anderson water system that we provide, it's easy to, you know, run antifreeze through that system. So um, as far as any any other additions, I'm not sure of. All right. And this is all kind of, I'm going to combine these questions because they all kind of go along the same, mm -hmm. the same route here. So uh, hang with me here. What is the warranty on the chassis and coach? Uh, what about your appliances? And uh, where do you take them when you're traveling? If you purchase it in Florida, can you take it to a dealer in, say, Colorado? Yeah, I'll start with uh, the warranty. So uh, one year from Thor Motor Coach and everything we provide, um, uh, the chassis itself is going to be three year or, or 36,000 miles. Uh, the powertrain is going to be five year or, or 60,000. So the great thing with this new chassis is, is um, you know, those warranties are still going to be the same. Um, the, uh, the appliances, what I will talk about there is uh, we have what's called the one source warranty for, you know, the first year, uh, if you have something wrong with your, your Norcold refrigerator or your Dometic, um, you know, uh, air conditioner or uh, Coleman mock air conditioner or, uh, you know, Whirlpool refrigerator. So obviously we use a lot of different vendors and suppliers, uh, especially with, um, uh, with the appliances. So we're not going to send you on essentially a wild goose chase to contact that individual supplier or vendor. Uh, for what may be happening. So we'll handle that internally for at least uh, the first year of you owning the coach. Yeah, and it's vitally important when you get your coach, folks, uh, you get a warranty registration card with, say, your your Whirlpool refrigerator or your microwave or whatever it is. Fill that out and send that in. That is an important step that you folks need to take when you do that. Uh, question coming in about storage. Is the basement below floor storage fully insulated and heated? Uh, it's heated. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we have duct work um, that goes directly into those storage bays. Um, and something else we forgot uh, to talk about is um, the drain plugs. You know, you have a great picture there of, of the cooler. Uh, if you happen to have, in some cases, the coolers that have the drain plug right there, probably more cases, all coolers have that. But if you get a leaky cooler, it goes on to, um, you know, the basement part or the bottom part of that that storage bay. Uh, you also have a drain plug there. Uh, but yeah, all, the, all of them are heated. Um, uh, insulated, you have insulation in the doors. So uh, the baggage doors right there are insulated. Um, so obviously probably not to the, uh, the full capacity you'd have on the sidewalls or where the living area is, but uh, you do have some insulation and they are, they are ducted for, uh, for heating. All right. And uh, this is a great one. And we talked a little bit of it. We'll touch on it one more time. What are the differences between the Challenger and Miramar besides the bull, full body paint? Yeah. And this is, this is really simple. Uh, just a handful of things. So full body paint uh, as an option for Miramar, it's going to be standard for the Challenger. Um, you're going into uh, dual pane windows as an option for Miramar. It's going to be standard for the Challenger. Uh, day night shades, um, not an option for Miramar, uh, but standard for the Challenger. 
And lastly, uh, you know, bigger refrigerator and all but one floor plan in the Challenger. So the double uh, double doors or French door refrigerator with with ice and water in the door, um, except for the 35 MQ. Uh, that refrigerator is going to be the same as every other uh, Miramar floor plan. So really simple changes. But uh, for some, it's it's. Um, you know, it's, for some, it's important. Um, and I think the, the Challenger has two floor plans with a uh, 24,000 pound chassis, whereas the Miramar only has just one. All right. Uh, AC question. What, do they have heat pumps and dedicated condensation drains? Uh, dedicated? No. Um, I'm not sure what a dedicated condensation drain is. I, I think but, that might be yeah. what we have in the diesel products where they kind of go along and, and drain out the back. Uh, I don't think we have that on, on our class A's, but I think Chris Carter can chime in. But do they have heat pumps on those ACs? No, 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 no heat pumps in the ACs. Um, just uh, we have two 13,500 uh, BTU uh, air conditioners. So the Col right. Coleman Mox is what they are. Okay, uh, Coley's, we've answered the theater, theater seats full of recline, the awning we showed, talked about the wind sensor. Uh, here's one about the bathrooms. Are the toilets macerator style or other types? Are they plastic? Are they porcelain? Uh, porcelain. All right, and they are not macerators. Uh, one more time, if you could go over this question uh, from Josh. What is powered by the inverter aside from the fridge, and are there particular outlets that are set up on the inverter? Yeah, yeah, he must have been a little late to, to the yeah. video. Um, I already talked about this, but yeah, no, not a problem. Um, you have two outlets uh, specifically dedicated to that. So if you're a line in the bed, uh, in this picture, it would be, you know, if you're facing the campsite, it'd be um, the left hand side, that 110 outlet. The easiest way is the outlet that's going to be nearest the galley. Um, and then in the driver's seat, that power workstation, you have a 110 outlet. So you utilizing an iPad or a laptop, um, that outlet is inverted. And of course your media. So the outlets where your TVs are plugged in uh, is inverted. And of course we already talked about the refrigerator. And uh, one more on the awning. Are there differences between the awnings on the Miramar and the Challenger? No. Um, some of the Challenger floor plans, I think have, um, have armed awnings and I have to brush up on which ones they are um, for, for 21. But uh, as far as the the materials and stuff, that's uh, going to be the same. But uh, yeah. all of ours are going to be armless. I think some of the challengers are armed. Uh, I have to double check on which ones they are. Yeah. Our, uh, one more question. Are dual pane windows available? Yes. Yeah. Again, one of the differences between Miramar and Challenger um, is an option for Miramar standard on Challenger. Okay. And dual pane windows. And if you have any other questions or more or have more interest in seeing uh, talking to someone actually at the factory about the Miramar, real easy to do. All you have to do is head on over to ThorMotorCoach.com. This is our webpage right here. And if you go over to Sales Advisor, you can click right there and you can fill out all the information there. And our coach link will get back with you. Uh, they can help you find a dealer. A lot of great resources on here. And I know we've had a couple of questions. You know, we've talked about some of the 21 changes. Well, as soon as we can uh, get in and get a little more uh, information, we will uh, take and update the website for you. But I'm excited, Jordan, to get to get back to the office to see uh, see these great 21 products that we have coming out here very soon. Yeah, same. Um, again, I, I feel, um, you know, I could have done a little bit better job of having been in the plant and being able to get my hands and, and actually see and, and touch and uh, go over some of the things on this new chassis that we're all really excited about. And Ford's done a tremendous job in their engineering department for, you know, the last couple of years, uh, really, to make the, the experience of going full time uh, or on a weekend trip and, and a gas class A uh, much more much more enjoyable uh, from driving, um, you know whether it's short or long distances. So, uh, but yeah, I, again, know enough to be dangerous so far, and and we're excited about it. Uh, you know, really really happy that uh, we're getting ready to be back in the plant soon, and uh, for most of our plant workers are already back. So, um, yep. yeah, good all around. Yep. Yeah, so we're excited to uh, get the product rolling here. Everybody who uh, chimed in today, we appreciate you watching. Uh, we're going to share this a little bit later on once it does its processing. And if you have friends, go ahead and share it with them. Uh, we appreciate everyone who's asked questions over the past few that we've done. We got more on the way as we get products built. We are going to try and get out there and 
get our pictures and our videos so we can go out there and do more of these for you folks. So I appreciate it, Jordan. You have a great afternoon. We'll see you when we're back at the plant. Everybody else have a great day from wherever you are watching.